Can you work out if trunks are formed in this topology? So will a trunk be formed between switch one and switch two? Or will the interfaces remain as access ports? And what about the link between switch two and switch three? Now I'm running two Wireshark captures here. Here's the capture between switch one and switch two. And here's the capture between switch two and switch three. So will DTP be used? Will trunks be negotiated between the switches? So between switch one and switch two and switch two and switch three, will they negotiate to form trunks? So download the attached Wireshark captures and see if you can answer the questions. Does a trunk get formed between switch one and switch two? And does a trunk get formed between switch two and switch three? Okay, so let's see if a trunk is formed between switch one and switch two, and if a trunk is formed between switch two and switch three. This is the capture between switch one and switch two. I'm gonna do a search for DTP. So I've named the switches to make it easy to know which switch is sending DTP messages. Cisco switch one, Cisco switch two. So again, this is the link between these two switches. If we look at the dynamic trunk protocol, notice operating administrative mode is access auto. Operating administrative, ISL negotiated. So it looks like they may negotiate to use ISL. Trunk status is access auto. And what I'll do is just make this bigger so we can see the full Wireshark capture. Notice trunk operating status is access. Trunk administrative status is auto. In other words, auto has been used on that switch. Now this is switch one. And I could show you that by looking at the console of the switch. So console of switch one. Show interface trunk firstly shows us that no trunks are formed, but notice show interface gigabit zero zero switch port what you'll notice here is this command shows the interface. Interface is a switch port. Administrative mode is dynamic auto. Operational mode is static access. In the Wireshark capture, we see operating status is access. Administrative mode is auto. So administrative mode is dynamic auto over there. That's what we see here. Static access is the operational mode. So operating mode is access. So at this point, there's no trunking on that port. The port is acting as an access VLAN in VLAN one, as you can see over there. Negotiation of trunking is on, but a trunk is not formed. And as I go through the messages, I mean, you must be careful looking at the very first messages. Go and look at the later messages to see if the state changed. Notice still access auto. Trunk type is ISL negotiated. They would negotiate to use ISL if one of the sides negotiated. Switch two is also set to access auto. So the point is, Notice over here, DTP, operating, administrative mode, access auto, operating, administrative, ISL negotiated. Both of these switches are using DTP. I'm searching for DTP messages and we can see DTP messages, but they set to mode auto. Mode auto or dynamic auto, as we can see here, means that that side will not negotiate to form a trunk the other side would have to initiate trunking. Here's switch two. Show interface gigabit zero zero switch port. Notice dynamic auto. That is the administrative mode. Operational mode is static access. So they both configured to use dynamic auto because neither of them initiate a connection to the other side they're both passively waiting basically for the other side to initiate trunking. Trunking is not formed. So there's no trunk formed between switch one and switch two. I won't use the show trunk command on switch two yet because we wanna see what happens on the right hand side. 
But notice here, show interface trunk, no trunk is formed on switch one. Okay, so I kind of hinted at it. What do you think is gonna happen between switch two and switch three? Here's the Wireshark capture between switch two and switch three. I'll filter for DTP once again. Here's switch three messages. Notice the difference. Dynamic trunk protocol, access desirable. Operating administrative mode, ISL.1Q. So that's different to what we saw on the other side. If we look at switch two on this link, notice trunk auto, 802.1Q negotiated. So a little bit different. Notice switch two, switch three, one side is using auto, the other side is using desirable. So if I go right down to the end, this is switch two, trunk status is type trunk. Trunk value is trunk auto. Trunk operating status is a trunk. Now if we go back to the other switches, so this is switch two talking to switch one, and we look at the trunk status, notice trunk status is access. And I don't know if that's confusing, so let me show you on the diagram. So on the left-hand side, switch two to switch one. This is the capture between switch one, switch two. Notice operating status is access. This is an access port. But on this side, notice trunk operating status is trunk. That side's access, right-hand side is a trunk. It's become a trunk. Trunk administrative status is auto. This side, it's also auto. But because switch three initiated the trunk, notice it says desirable here, a trunk was formed between switch two and switch three. So because switch three initiated the trunk, because it's set to desirable, a trunk is formed. We can see that once again by looking at the console of the switches. So on switch three, show interface, gigabit zero zero switch port. Notice command shows administrative mode dynamic desirable. Encapsulation used is dot one Q. Operational mode is trunk. It's operating as a trunk using dot one Q. Show interface trunk. We can see that. Encapsulation is dot one Q. Trunking is enabled. Now if we have a look on the other side, it's a little bit different here. Show interface trunk. On this side, it's negotiated to use dot one Q and trunking is enabled. Whereas this side, the encapsulation is dot one Q. And the reason for that is I explicitly configured the encapsulation as dot one Q and set it to dynamic desirable. I wanted to show you a trunk that was negotiated with DTP and using dot one Q rather than ISL. If I had not put this in, the switches would have actually negotiated to form an ISL trunk. These switches will use ISL first and then dot one Q. So I wanted to explicitly force it to use dot one Q. So they will try and use ISL, but if they can't, then they'll use dot one Q. But again, I've overridden that or uh, I forced the switch to use dot one Q. Whereas this side notice, it could have used ISL or dot one Q. So again, on switch three, if we go, at the, go up here, notice trunk desirable dot one Q dot one Q. Whereas on switch two, trunk auto dot one Q negotiated. So notice trunk desirable dot one Q dot one Q, trunk auto dot one Q negotiated. One side was forced to use dot one Q, the other side negotiated to use dot one Q. Okay, so in summary, left hand side doesn't become a trunk because both sides are set to auto. Right hand side does become a trunk because one side was set to dynamic desirable, as we can see over there, and uses dot one Q. On this side, show interface trunk. The only trunk that was negotiated is on gigabit zero one. Okay, how are you doing? Are you able to answer these questions? Do you enjoy this? Please give me feedback. Do you enjoy these kind of quiz questions?